Hello everyone, my name is Val and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I will discuss a few assessment methods I use in my classes. We all feel great when we see growth and improvement in what we do. However, as teachers, we cannot see growth if we don't measure it. That's why no great class is complete without some way of assessing students. It's a win-win situation for both you and your students. Your students see what they have learned and you use the results to plan or adjust your future lessons. There are three ways of assessing students. Diagnostic assessment, formative assessment, and summative assessment. Let's start with the diagnostic assessment. Diagnostic assessment happens at the beginning of a lesson or course and aims to understand what your students already know. We assess general language proficiency by running a placement or diagnostic test. Formative assessment. Formative assessment is used to monitor student learning style and ability and to check students' language comprehension. Most formative assessment strategies are used during the lesson. The information gathered is rarely marked or graded. In a word, formative assessment is a quick way to see if your students learned the material you presented in class. A few formative assessment examples are quizzes, vocabulary comprehension activities, <clears throat> reading comprehension activities, mini presentations, lesson exit tickets, and so on. Summative assessment. The summative assessment aims to evaluate student learning and academic achievement at the end of a term or year by comparing it against a universal standard or um, school benchmark. Summative assessments are always graded, take place under controlled conditions, and therefore have more visibility. Summative assessments include midterm exams, end term exams, review tests, end of unit or chapter tests, and standardized tests like SATs or ACTs. Let me finish this chapter with a quote. When the cook tastes the soup, that's formative. When the guests taste the soup, that's summative. Tests are not always an accurate way to measure performance. One of the most common reasons why teachers should not only use tests is because students may have test anxiety. What happens is that students get so nervous when presented with a test that they don't do very well. You then cannot see your student's true ability. ELL students can be extra nervous because they have to recall information they have learned and they may have to decipher what the test question is asking in the first place. Also, tests really only measure what students can memorize or recall, not necessarily what work they can produce. For example, suppose you give a multiple choice test about the vocabulary they learned. In that case, it only tests if they understand one meaning of the word, not necessarily whether they understand how to apply the same word in different contexts. Another example would be oral skills. Students who understand certain phrases you've taught them 
may not understand them if another person outside the classroom says it, especially if that person has an accent. These are the reasons why I think that we, as teachers, should focus on formative assessment in class because it's easy enough to arrange and implement. At the end of the day, what happens in class directly affects the summative assessment outcomes. So what are some ways to assess ELL students during the class? 1. Oral presentations or performances. Many students who have test anxiety might get nervous because their reading or writing skills are not very good. That doesn't mean, however, that they are not proficient in oral skills. Assessing oral presentations or performances typically include role plays, dialogues, and summaries. Here are some ideas to incorporate oral presentations or performances as part of your assessment. And please remember, I'm sharing methods which work in my classes. Your situation, your classroom, your environment may be different from mine. Here is one of my typical lesson closure activities. First, we practice asking and answering questions together. Then I display all the questions on the slide and give my students a couple of minutes to practice them in pairs. If time allows, I invite a few students to choose three questions and role play the dialogue in front of the class. Here is an example of a simple dialogue practice in grade 1. Sorry, I had to blur the video to hide the children's faces. Okay, so, dogs. How? How many dogs do you have? I have three dogs. Excellent! Good job, everybody! Yeah! Here is an example of a lesson summary in grade 5. Okay, traffic rules in Nanjing. We have many traffic rules in Nanjing. We usually drive on the right side of the road. We have to wear a helmet when riding a bicycle. Yes. We can drive people when riding a bicycle. People under 18 can't get a driver's license. Mm -hmm. People over 16, 16 can drive cars. We have to wear a, selfie, uh, a safety, safety, belt. safety belt in a car. We must keep safe. Excellent. Finally, here's an example of a mini presentation in grade 4. Okay, so go. Two, non-verbal assessments. Use this type of assessment with shy students. What you're looking for in this type of assessment is their understanding of vocabulary. Some examples include charades. Give a student vocabulary words you've taught and have them act it out to see if they understand what the word or concept is. You could even have them summarize a text by miming it. Pictures or storyboards. You can ask students to draw or collect pictures to show their knowledge of a topic. Storyboards are great for assessing reading comprehension. At the end of the lesson, students can draw pictures to show their understanding of the text. 
Some storyboards are really, really funny. Three, quizzes. I love quizzes. Quizzes are a great way to check language comprehension. Three components of language comprehension include vocabulary knowledge, background knowledge, and knowledge of text and sentence structures. I hold a quiz for two reasons. One is to introduce an interesting fact and um, two is to review previously taught material uh, or reinforce it. So, for example, uh, what you're seeing right now is uh, an example of a quiz when I introduce an interesting fact. Here's the question. How many parts does a car have? Uh, for example, you know, and they don't really know the answer. I didn't know the answer, I had to Google it, you know, and they just guess in pairs um, which choice is the correct one. In this case, it's 30,000, a car has 30,000 parts, and this way, uh, if you use a quiz this way, it's going to help your students to remember this interesting fact. Here's another example. Uh, students read uh, the story, any text, and it's one of the pages in the story, yeah? So uh, difficult words are highlighted, and then when we finish reading, I invite a student from each team, and we have a pop quiz. And take a look at the question. What shape is Abby's house? It's in the text, so if they paid attention, they would know that uh, Abby's house is round, which means it's a circle. And they get three points here. Here's another example of uh, the quiz type activity you can use in your class. What is the word? You need to make a word from the first letters of these four words yeah so number one it's a country in europe the flag of this country is black red and yellow it is germany and as you can see the first letter of the word goes here two it is a fruit and a color three which animal is the king of all animals and four what kind of doctor checks your teeth so um, this type of activity, you can do it in pairs, you can do it in groups, and also you can invite a couple of students from each team to do this on the board if you have a big classroom. It's mm, really adaptable. You can do it in a variety of ways. And here's the last example. Uh, it's also a quiz type activity. Uh, based on newspaper reading. I think it's a good idea to do it in higher grades, grade 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. So uh, here's how you can do it. We have a newspaper, we have an article here, you can pick an article, any article you want. And then you ask your students to read the article. They have two minutes and you don't need to make them read in class. They can read silently. In higher grades, they all can read very well. And then when they are done reading, you do some reading and vocabulary comprehension activities. Let's take a look at the questions uh, in the reading comprehension activity. So question one, in 1990, US scientists launched the telescope into space, true or false? So you can use true or false questions, right? Um, or you can use this activity. You can ask your students to number the items one, two, three, four in the order they should follow according to the article, right? And then you can have a class discussion. Uh, again, it's up to you how many questions you want to pick. Okay, uh, next one would be vocabulary comprehension activity. Here, uh, you can make up your own questions. 
So for example, in this way, uh, the, the, the words in Italixer vocabulary items from the article for each group circle, the word that does not belong. And again, you can do it in a variety of ways in your class. Uh, here's another activity. Look at the list of words from the reading. Match each word with the definition on the right. Put the right word in each blank. These sentences are from the article, and I want to draw your attention to these facts, that these sentences are from the article. You have a word bank uh, below, and this is something that's going to help your students, right? So they can um, uh, fill in the blanks. And here would be the same activity, but with a twist. So put the right word in each blank, but these sentences are not from the article. So it's a bit more challenging, but it's a great practice for your students. Four, KWL charts. KWL is a graphic organizer that uh, help students organize information before, during, and after the lesson. The KWL reading strategy is an instructional technique used to improve reading comprehension. It also improves a student's ability to remember the material. KWL is usually used with classroom textbooks, storybooks, or newspaper articles. I have a separate video I made on KWL reading strategy. To see it, please click on the link above or the link in the description. These are the tools, methods, and strategies I use in my classes. Please remember that the assessment methods I use might be significantly different from the methods you use. At the end of the day, we teach our students, not the lesson plans. So we adapt our strategies to the educational system we are in. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe and smash that bell icon to turn the notifications on so you never miss a single upload. Also, a big shout out to my patrons, Martina and Peter, whose undying support is always appreciated. Thank you, and I'll see you in my next video.